All right, so today I'm using a 32 ounce prep tumbler from the Steel Magnolia. These tumblers are awesome. They save you so much time, so go grab you some. The paints I'm using are Arteza paints, but you do not have to use Arteza. I use very many different brands of paints, very different many consistencies and qualities of paints. And just depending on what you feel looks good and your vision, like you're gonna get a really good outcome no matter what you use. So do not be stuck up on the brand. I promise you, you can go to Walmart. Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any of those places, and you're gonna find a paint that is gonna work for you. Same thing for my brushes. I have a variety of brushes laid out in front of me. I cannot tell you when, where, any of that of how I got them. I just know that I have them and I pulled them all out because I didn't know what was gonna work best for this cup. So, like I said, just grab you some brushes, some paint, and have fun. That is the biggest thing is having fun because if you're not having fun, what's the point in doing any of this? All right, and then of course you're gonna need some water to just go in between your colors and clean your brushes. Um, this cup idea originally, let me just tell you guys, I seen Jessica Flynn do a cup and I thought it was absolutely beautiful. So then I wanted to come in and do it. Um, I did not watch her tutorial and do the cup at the same time. I just kind of watched it a couple times and I was like, okay, I got this. And then I got my paints ready and I laid everything out in front of me and I started going. And then I realized that what she did was beautiful, but that's not how it was working. Um, so I had to trash that cup and then I came in with a new cup, which is what's in front of us now. And I just started putting my colors in different places. And that's the biggest thing I wanna you know, point out to you guys is definitely take inspiration from me, Jessica Flynn, or any of these other artists out here but make it yours because that's that's the most important thing you know like it's really cool to replicate some things that you think are beautiful but when you put your own touch to it your own spin it really 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 just stands out so much more and you'll appreciate it more and I may be rambling but I just think that's one of the most important things is I feel like we all get so caught up in the beauty of things and like oh my god I have to make it and I don't even think it's for sales because I don't sell to the public like that anymore I do a couple ready to ships and that's it but I do think that it's you know we see it it looks good and we're like I can do that I want to do it but then if we have a tendency to maybe beat ourselves up if it doesn't look like the original one that we've seen and it took me a very long time to get out of that. And I just want to tell you guys that like, if you can get into that frame of mind, it is the best way to do things. Like if you can recreate identically, that's wonderful, but don't tell yourself that you have to. So with that thought process, this cup's going to be a whole lot easier because as you can see, as I've been laying these colors out, this is awful. Like it, you kind of like, Oh my God. And so this was my second one at this point. And the first one I had trashed. And then this one, I was like, God, it's not working out any better. But I continued with the trust the process mentality and just kept dipping, you know, between color to color. I was mixing colors together before I'd even lay them on the cup. I played around with different brush sizes, which you can see that there. I just went all in with the pink and the purple and just was pretty much doing my thing, just trying to get it to go together and blend because I'm like, okay, if I can get this base layer down, then I can at least come back in with some highlights or something to try to pull it all together. So definitely do not get discouraged if you're doing your cup and it's looking like a hot mess in the beginning because I think that's pretty much the norm for all of us, regardless of whose technique you're going to follow. So another thing to keep in mind with these paints is that even if you're working with the same brand, um, they're not always going to come out the same when you put them on the cup, meaning some are going to be more transparent or opaque than others. Some are going to be a little bit in the middle. Um, with this box of paints right here, I thought they were all going to be the same, but as I go around with this cup, you'll see some of them look streaky. That is not because of too much water. It can happen, but these particular ones, that was because the color was just a little bit more translucent than the others, and that's fine because I'm going to build up layers on this anyway. Doing the layers on these cups is a very, very important process. This isn't your average brush stroke tumbler where you just kind of go in side by side with individual strokes. As you see, you're blending and you're mixing colors and things are kind of everywhere. So you 100% do want to layer um, because you're going to have some blends that maybe looked one way in your head and maybe they just didn't you know, go together as well once you put them on the cup, which is okay. Like you're going to be able to go in with that and you can either dry that paint up, take a lighter color, go over it, 
or you could take a darker color and go over it or you could wait for the end which is my absolute best part is when we add the gold paint and the gold foils like that to me is another thing that really makes these cups pop but again the layers are super duper important so that's pretty much what you're going to see here is me going in between different paints um, just building up my color at some point I will pick up just water and kind of smooth out the transition between the blends a little bit um, but that's pretty much it you're just going to watch me for a little bit just go in between and back and forth and it's just water and color water and color and that's really all you guys to do is just make it yours and blend it the way you see fit and you know this right here watching me it's just going to give you a small idea of you know the process that I did but it's not exactly the way that it's meant to be. It's like, I've done multiple of these cups and I don't think my process is the same with either one. It's actually been very hard picking out what footage I wanted to upload for you guys because I do film everything. I have the purple tumbler filmed. The green tumbler, I believe I filmed it. The blue one's filmed. I did one with a Walmart, you know, cheaper brand or, you know, cheaper craft store brand acrylic paints. And that one's filmed um one with the walmart acrylic neons that one's filmed so there's quite i have lots of footage and all the footage pretty much shows me doing the same but different things and that's just yeah i'm gonna repeat this guys to you as many times as you watch my videos you're gonna hear me tell you like you don't have to do it identical to me this is just how i do it because even i may change it up from cup to cup just i don't know i feel like when it comes to this paint like you cannot tell it what to do as corny as it may sound it's really telling you what to do so once you have your painted layers the way you want them and the cup looks pretty much where you want it to be that's when we come in and we add the gold paste um little sidebar I did not film that for the other cup I do not know why I really thought I did but anyhow this is a different cup as you see but I promise you the same process just go through if you see places that are kind of dark you want to you know cover up put the gold over there Sometimes I like to go over the edges. Sometimes I use it as a band-aid or I just add a lot. It's really up to you with how much you add with this gold. There's no right or wrong way. And now we're at my absolute favorite part and back to my original cup. Um, right now I'm using some adhesive that I got from Bridges and Bows. And with this adhesive, what I do is I just take my fan brush and I will go around the cup in different areas where I'm going to want to add my gold foil. I'm going to spread it on there, go around the entire cup so that way it has time to kind of dry and get tacky as I'm going. I'll even let it sit a little bit longer after I've added it to let it, you know, dry up a little bit more. And then I just start adding my foils. So when I added my foils on this cup today, I decided to be bougie and use my crystal katana versus using my hand like I do when the camera's not going. <laughs> but anyhow... I do just take these foils and I go around the entire cup where I laid my adhesive down. The foils that I'm using in this video are from Bridges and Bows. I believe this is their copper. It looks like a rose gold to me, but I mean, okay, copper it is. Either way, I think it's absolutely beautiful when it's put on these cups. Um, I have some other colors, but I always run back to this one. Like This is always my go-to. I think it is just absolutely stunning and it pairs well with almost any color scheme. I've done blue, purple, pink, so on and so forth. And this pretty much is my go-to copper gold accent. I don't know what to call it, but I will tell you that this color is my favorite. And again, I'll leave it down in the description so you can grab you some. They do make foils and flakes at other places like Walmarts and things of that nature. And you can pick those up and use those as well. I did grab some from Hobby Lobby the other day that I'm going to try out, but I haven't tested them yet, but I'll definitely let you guys know how I like them. So anyhow, as you see, I'm using that eyeshadow applicator to just rub off the excess with this and smooth it out. Um, these you get at Dollar Tree, like 10 for a dollar, and they're absolutely amazing. You can go in and use your finger, which I do do that sometimes, not very often, just to, you know, help move it out. And a pro tip... I leave just a teeny tiny bit of movement left in my foil. So that way when I put my epoxy on there, I kind of get some flakes throughout the cup. And you'll see them like some people may think they're not supposed to be there. But I promise you that's exactly what I was going for. I just needed a little bit more specks in there to just make it a little bit more organic for me. For my final touches, I just go around the cup and I go with my finger and I make sure everything's just laying down exactly where I need it to be and it's going to move the way I need it to move. 
Once I've done all of this, I do not seal these cups. I set them to the side. I let them dry for 12 to 24 hours. Once the cups are ready for epoxy, I come in. My first two coats, I always use Counterculture Fast Set. I absolutely love it. It's amazing. After my first two coats, I will go in. I will sand. I will clean the inside of my cup. I will clean the rim. And then I will put the cup right back on the turner and I will seal it up with the Counterculture Artist Resin. Um, these are my absolute two favorite epoxies. They work great for me. You can use any brand of epoxy that you choose, but those are just my favorites. So if you guys have any questions or want to know anything more, please feel free to let me know. Drop it in the comments. Tag me anywhere. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Take care. Bye.